There's monsters, more buttons, and we're live. Hey, folks, uh, my name is Walt, and when I'm not running the Galaxy's Edge podcast, I sometimes work for that guy, uh, Nick Cole, Chaos Actual. And uh, today, he has put all the irons in the fire so we can strike it and light it with Larry Korea. How are you, sir? I am doing awesome. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank you so much for coming. In fact, you know, we were rolling in the green room or uh, just a bit earlier. We were we were like, oh, yeah, in this. And, yeah, oh, yeah. And, and you know, we're all like, shouldn't we do this on the show? <laughs> so uh, without further ado, uh, can you give us a little bit of your background and uh, uh, tell us what's on your wanted post? Even though everybody already knows anything like that, <laughs> there's true. probably, you know, some Euro guy tuning in. He's like, I like Galaxy's Edge. Who is this chap? You know? And, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm Larry Korea, and uh, I'm the uh, author of the Monster Hunter International series and uh, the Grim Noir Chronicles uh, and a uh, whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, Dead Six Military Thrillers, the um, uh, uh, Saga of the Forgotten Warrior Epic Fantasy series, uh, Gunrunner Sci-Fi, Servants of uh, Servants of War is my latest novel. It's a dark fantasy. I have it right on the shelf. Oh, yeah, it's badass. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, I wrote that with Steve Diamond. Came out really good. Uh, I'm one of the hosts of Writer Dojo. It's a writing podcast. And uh, uh, I've known I've known Nick for uh, many years now. And uh, pretty much since he kind of blew up on the indie scene. And, yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've been on the show with you guys before. And uh, I love hanging out with you, talking stuff. Uh, this, this week, I've got a Kickstarter going on, which is why we got together. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. And so, no, I'm just having a good time. <laughs> yeah, and for the Galaxy's Edge audience, before I wrote Galaxy's Edge, I, I used to be a slave in the trade pub galleys, um, and they did not like me and everything like that. And so one day they fired me because I wrote some wrong thing, and I did not <laughs> know Larry at the time. And and he and and the article that I wrote about it got to him, and he said, "See, that's exactly what we're talking about." And I think people on this podcast know, you know, my journey from from there to here. I try not to talk about it too much, but it gets out there. But I, I'm just thankful to God that Larry did that. That really brought my career back to Indy and reminded me, like, my relationship and our relation. And Larry's the epitome of this. Like, if you ever want, if you haven't checked out the Monster Hunters uh, series, which I think the first book is free, just like drugs. Um, <laughs> it's got to go there, huh? Just like there. crack. <laughs> just like crack. First book is free. Um I, and it's a feedback we get a lot in the Galaxy's Edge universe, which is, oh, you guys are so accessible. You guys are the best uh, with fan service and just getting together and interacting. Well, um, Larry makes us look like pikers, like the monster, <laughs> the Monster Hunter International Fan Club, which I am actually, I am, I am part of. Makes it, it like it, that is just you should just get into the movement just because of that, because that's a um, I'm going to get it wrong here, but that is a. That is a gun club with a book problem or a book club with a gun problem, whichever you want to talk about. They get emotional about guns. So the Galaxy's Edge <laughs> audience, straight segue to that. But um, the Larry epitomizes what I really think every writer needs to strive for, which is zero uh, um, signal noise between the writer and the reader. And in, in that it's just, it's the relationship as God intended and not some publishing company, um, you know, hold, and he happens to work for the best publishing company, which is Bain. Everybody at Bain is lovely. And you, I know all of you have read every, every book there, uh, you know, and love everybody. Um, and good, awesome personalities that run the gambit. We're, we're the, we're the odd man out of trade publishing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you are because... literally the rebel Alliance. We are, we are, we, yeah. uh, Honestly, honestly, because if it wasn't for us, you just could write the whole thing off. But uh, there's uh, it, it, all it's because our headquarters are in North Carolina, not Manhattan. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and there may or may not be a gun range out back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and our, and our, publisher, our publisher is just cool as hell. And so yeah. she she's awesome. Tony Weisskopf, legend. Yeah, she, is, yeah. she is literally the well-deserved, and I challenge anybody to refute this, first lady of publishing. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, th and that's like the the even my leftist agent who f fired me the day after Trump, who was hung over and fired me the day after Trump got elected the first time. <laughs> um, he's like, oh, I love Tony. Tony's the greatest. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, she's the opposite of everything that you are. <laughs> so so uh, Larry uh, and he's done Kickstarters before and everything like that. And we know that in uh, our tribe, we just did. 
the Galaxy's Edge miniatures, the Alpha Bravo team, and you guys all love it. So we know that we have a large uh, miniature and wargaming group. And so what we wanted to do is talk about the Kickstarter that Larry just went live and and bazinged with, which it's right now 220, 225, 230. Uh, I think 220, 218, I think. Yeah. And now it's like, it, it's crushed all the, like it, oh, it, it funded day one with oh, an yeah. hour. And yeah. First hour was kind of nuts, man. I was glued to my computer. Right. <laughs> Just yeah. watching it. <laughs> yeah. It's like the early, well, I don't know. You, have you ever, you, you've never done an indie a novel on KDP, right? But that's how I it have is. not. Yeah. When the, mo like, see, if you dig this mojo, get a KDP account make up like a ridiculous name and write like a goofy novel. And it's fun because that's what you do as an indie author. You just sit in front of KDP refreshing and watching your sales. <laughs> you know, you're just like, am, am I lying? Walt? no, the, the, like for the first week I still do it. I get up every morning and go, okay, what do we got here? And it's like, it's like crack. It's crazy. Jason, he runs the, the galaxy's edge and he just jumped in with our new uh, coffee logo. And uh, I think like you can't talk for Jason for hours on end. Cause he just likes refreshing the sales button and, and enjoying that. So that's all I do. That's, yeah. really all, that's what I was doing actually while yeah. you guys were talking. Yeah. Just refresh the sales button and count the money. Um, which I just listened to this guy and he's like, the way to make money, and Larry has a massive financial background, is to make your money work for you. And I'm like, oh, is that what the KDP button is for? So um, so it funds immediately, and then now we're crushing it in the stretch goals. And uh if I are you I think you're I don't, I think you are putting your art up on Instagram with the, the character art and things like that. And so like, but where I want to start and, and I think it's always best to strip it back just in case anyone is uninformed here, which is inconceivable regarding the massive success that Monster Hunter, Mo Monster Hunter International is, is can you give us a breakdown of what Monster Hunter International is? And then I want Walt to talk about his experience in, in, in the GWAT in the middle of the desert when someone, when, when they realized they were of the same monster hunter tribe. Yeah, I know. So at monster hunter international, uh, the, the, the basic idea is that monsters exist and these are the guys that handle monster problems for fun and profit. It's a business. It's a family business. It's been around for a long time. Very professional. Uh, my background, I was a, I was a, a gun guy, a firearms guy, and then I was a military contractor and so I kind of wrote it from that perspective. It's that kind of people and uh, just taking care of business. And we had a lot of fun. It was inspired by uh, horror movies, actually. B-horror movies. Is, uh, it all started on an internet gun forum 20 years ago, sitting around a bunch of gun nuts talking about how horror movies would be over really fast if they starred our people. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like this running gag. And I started thinking about how awesome that was. And I was like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that. I'm going to write a book with that in the... You know, the book actually opens with a quote from the from that internet uh, internet thing. Actually, I want to read a review. I got a review on Reddit the other day that I think is going to really oh, yeah. sum this. Yeah, this will be great. Let's see if I can find this real fast. I know this review. It, it made my morning this morning. Hang on, let me find this. And uh... <laughs> yeah, but again, if you ever if you ever uh, like if you're just listening to this right now, just jump on Facebook and go join uh, the Monster Hunter International group. You'll see a lot of the same GE people over there. And it's nothing but this stuff, and it's absolutely delightful. All right, so here, here is a, a review from Reddit that I think is 100% accurate. Started Monster Hunter International due to some recommendations here. This has to be the most regressive, sexist, right-wing fantasy book I have ever come across. What the hell? The main <laughs> character happens to be a massive, muscular guy who not only wins shooting competitions as an expert in martial arts, but is also a brilliant accountant. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you, Walt. <laughs> no, you got the accountant part wrong. I'm, to be fair, I never said he was a brilliant accountant. I said he was a competent accountant. Okay, so that's just totally, totally blown out of proportion. Yeah, I, those those are my favorite reviews, and uh, and and we would get that. Um, and Walt Walt is a, an actual seventy fifth Ranger and everything like that. And we would delight over people that would say about one of our IPs. Um, these people are so gay for rangers it makes me sick and we're like yep that's it you know we, it, it's weird it's like could you sell more books for us thanks like because they just they think like if you if you bash this stuff you wish it away to the cornfield and you're like do you not realize that over 75 percent of the not the nation loves studs with guns killing monsters 
who are all, you know, like, have you, have you looked at how much in sales and black rifle, uh, coffee, uh, coffee, grunt style t-shirts, uh, Chris Pratt Pratt's continued ability to just do anything and dominate. Like just because you hate things, it's weird. Like they don't realize that there's a massive amount of people who just stumble on this idea yeah. of, of a bunch of dudes sitting around in a forum um, that all, you know, love guns and everything like that. And they're like, oh, did you, did you see, uh, you know, like name any night is probably if we go back to the nineties, you know, name hollow man or, or pumpkin head, you know, oh yeah, I would have done uh Pumpkinhead with a, <laughs> with a car 15, you know, and just mag dumped on him straight up and probably watched his pumpkin head spray all over the place. And then someone would have gained and they're like, well, you know, pumpkin head man could do this. And I'm like, well, I know jujitsu and I have a karambit so I could cut off his leaf hands. And, you know, <laughs> And I think that's basically your your books to an extent, yeah. right? We've all right. had these conversations amongst our friends, you know, and 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 so yeah, I just ran with that basically, and it it blew up huge. It kind of hit a it kind of hit a nerve. It, it, it just went nuts. Uh, first one I self published many years ago. Uh, series blew up from there. I got picked up by Band Books. We're now at eight regular novels, three spinoffs, and then uh, a collection of short fiction. Yeah, it's crazy, and and we go to these ideas, and we have this and the indie movement like and so when jason and i come up with galaxy's edge we go well it's star wars meets gi joe and you can see that if you ever went to trade pub or things like that they would go no i'm not interested in that or you know no i'm not interested in in crow mags with guns killing werewolves and it's like well you know east coast literary you know person who has a degree in hemingway's gay novel um <laughs> you know which is the guy i met who tried to buy my first novel and uh <laughs> And, 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 and it's like, I know you wouldn't read it, but every day at the gun, you know, on, on Saturdays at most gun ranges, you have to wait for 45 minutes to get in the gun range. And all of those people, they would read this book. And it's, it's, we still see it in the indie movement. There are these hits that come out and lit RPG is one of the, like, I could, I could see like someone trying to go into East coast publishing and saying, well, it's basically a novel about playing world of Warcraft. And they're like, no pass. And now people pay off their parents' mortgage writing those kind of novels. So it speaks to the power of like, if you just have fun with books, writing the things that you dig, there, there's an audience. And if you do it in like I was advocating about the way that you do it, which is, you know, very little signal noise between you and the and and the readers, like they I mean, I think at time I, I think at times you've had to like warn them, like, you know, like just because we're such great friends and everything, don't show up on my doorstep. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, I've had to have this conversation with people. Yeah, I, I, you're so accessible that I think like some people can like take that and like. Well, I know that you and your wife now have some empty bedrooms because your kids have all gone off to college. <laughs> Perhaps you know we're such buddies. Could I live with you, Larry? <laughs> and I get I get that kind of thing. And the sad thing is, like, I get that with fans. It's like, yes, I know you've read like for hundreds of hours. You've been in yeah. my head. Yeah, and, and so you you feel like we're really close. Dude, I don't know you. You're just a random guy who came up to me at the restaurant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they hit you at the restaurant? Oh, I get that. I get that because I, I I look distinct as part of my problem, you know? And yeah, so I'll right. get the thing where I'll be at a restaurant. Are you Larry Korea? And I'm like, yeah. And like, nice to meet you. And then they, they sit down and I'm like, well, you know, I'm out with my wife. <laughs> it's a little weird, man. I don't know yet, but all right. Yeah. No, but your, your 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 wife is, and I, I say don't say that, is one of the coolest chicks in publishing. Oh, my wife's badass. Yeah. Well, well, you you understand you understand you're in the same boat as I am. You know, uh, attractive wife who puts up with a lot of weird uh, sci-fi and fantasy for, uh, people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're in the exact same boat yeah. I am. We both married up like yeah. a lot. Which is what you want to do. You want to marry. You do not want to, I don't understand women why they would be with men. It disgusts me. But the fact that they 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 you want them to be better looking than you. You don't want to be better looking. You don't want to be doing them a favor. That's a different thing. Oh yeah. I mean, and the thing is, I honestly I, I married my wife before I got rich. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, now people are like, well, I can see why they're together. No, no, no. She married me when I was poor. Yeah, yeah you know she digs you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My wife yeah, supported us for 15 years singing opera. And she, you know, still looks like a young girl and everything like that. And we'll go out, you know, to Newport Beach and spend some money. And I look obviously like how I look. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a dirty old man. 
She just has good Portuguese genes. She looks young. She's not that. And she made all the money. I just happened to get lucky at the end. <laughs> well, the thing is, on the Portuguese jeans, that only works for the women because the guys, it works the opposite direction. I look 10 years older than I am. Like yeah. Your wife looks 10 years younger than It's not fair yeah. how it works for the ladies. But for the guys, but you know. It's odd, though. Uh, you are 6'8". It's 5. I'm, I'm sorry, 6. I was six, I'm 6'5 six, now. I've, six, five I've compressed. Now. Yeah. <laughs> That's because not, you, can, you not carry that of, Canabo to, uh, yeah. to conventions. <laughs> My experience is there's not a lot of Portuguese over six foot. No, I'm I was a freak. Uh, uh, but my mom, my mom is like uh, super super white Nordic English. Okay. Uh, actually, she's she's Slavic. My my mom is uh, I'm a Porto Slav basically. Right. My dad's a hundred percent Portuguese, and uh, he was six foot, which made him like a big dude. Yeah, you know. And then he had me six foot five, and I was like the freak amongst my peer group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and your boy is a, pretty good at football, too. He's a big guy. He's oh, dude, my boy. My boy is a beast. Uh, he's, yeah. he's, much, he's much bigger and stronger than I was at that age. Oh, wow. He's about 6'6 six, six right now. And, damn, that kid is – he's a nose guard. And, oh, wow. uh, yeah, he's a tough, tough kid. Yeah. Like, holy crap, he's a tough you, boy. You got to yeah. be tough to stand in front of an entire line and be like, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, and he's not the heaviest because he's only about 260. Uh you know, but he's he's got he's got a wingspan that's like seven feet wide. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nobody goes up the middle with him. Like like yeah. he just he and the thing is, we have actually on our team we have another guy who's even better than he is. And so our well, I guess we're always like state champions or, or second. But you know, I I love high school football. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah, I think it's one time we were going to play D and D, and you were like, "Yes, but I have high school football," and we're like, "Hey, we can <laughs> we can get around that." So uh, now what we'll do is we'll jump into uh, the Kickstarter and just talk about, give us a brief breakdown of, of what uh, the game is, because this is, a, this, is a, this is an in-house system for you. But yeah. if you don't know about Larry, and you haven't been posting them a lot lately, but first off, like Larry's miniature painting skills are like pro level, like yeah, really, uh, really, really good. Yeah, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I am like legit a really good painter. I've won painting contests and... Uh, uh, I, I would take my camera right here. I don't know if this is work real well. We can do it. But yeah, this is my office. So those are all painted minis. If that, sorry, there you go. Those are Jesus. all painted minis. And there you go. And I can see, yeah, those are all painted minis. There's my paint station there. Those are all war gaming tables. I've got enough room in here. I, I can do like 20 person uh, tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no, if you're no, wondering, more, more people if are you're drop wondering your where this. Fortress of Solitude is. It's on top of the mountain that Larry bought. No, we're not going to tell you where that's at. Um, because Larry's not a real author, so he bought a mountain with his sales. Yeah, I do I do admit I enjoy rubbing that in on my career. And I'm actually a very private guy, like a gun guy. So no, I'm, I tend yeah. to be here to be security conscious and that yeah. kind of thing. But I, I did actually put up photos the whole time we were building my house and <laughs> it was great. where it was located. And the reason I did that is I've got so many detractors yeah. that every time they, his career is irreparably ruined. I'd be like, and I, then I would put up enough more pictures of the house. Yeah. So it was like, it turned into like this weird HGTV live <laughs> building of the house on the mountains right. kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I just did that out of spite. I'll be honest. Yeah. yeah. Mean, <laughs> meanwhile, Stephen King is getting trolled by Ukrainians. <laughs> Man, that guy gets trolled by everybody. Holy crap! Right. Hey, I, you know what? It's a rough world. Don't don't uh, get in don't there. Do drugs, you know, kids. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't get out of the boat unless you want to. You want to get hit. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so you're you're. This is you are not like um, like we like. I I've never really played a miniatures game though I want to and like I secretly uh, watch Reaper miniatures which I think are very beautiful in storytelling. I don't have any ability or any fine motor skills. Um, I can barely feed myself most days. But uh, you are someone who, like, you didn't just, like, a lot of artists will go, like, oh, hey, here's the money. Here's another way for me to monetize my IP. Suddenly, I'm selling you guys all miniatures. No, you're, like, legit miniatures and wargaming. And you would set up these huge battles and have your crew over. And you haven't posted those either a lot lately either. No, nah, this last year I've been like honestly too crazy busy. But yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a gamer nerd. And uh, I do, probably I, I started out playing a lot of War Machine was how I got started. 
And then I got into a game called Infinity, which is a sci-fi game from Spain. I love that. That's my favorite system. Uh, I, I, and I, I make my own minis where I kit bash them. I cut them up and make, you know, little things. Uh, I, I'm kind of a competition painter. <laughs> I love that stuff. Yeah. This year, I've just hardly painted it all, though. And it's funny because I've now got 3D print test. These are all 3D printed test minis for the game. Oh, uh, and I've only I've only pin- painted a little bit of them. And I'll tell you guys why I've been so busy here in a little bit. But I've just had like, some stupid deadlines this year. Uh, and so I've not had any painting time. But, uh, no, so we do – and I do terrain. I'll do, like uh, – I do role-playing game nights. And we, we've played D&D before. I've played mm-hmm. with, you, uh, with Walt and uh, Nick. And uh, you guys know I'm a gamer nerd. Uh, so this, this I got approached by a company called Everything Epic, and they're a board game company, been around for a long time. They did the Rambo board game. They did the Big Trouble in Little China board game. Oh, wow. uh, just great guys and fans, and they approached me. This is actually pre-COVID is when we started on this, uh, and then everything took a you know massive hiatus. Uh, but they approached me about doing a miniatures game, and I was like, yeah, let's talk. And they're just good dudes, and I wound up playing some role-playing games at Gen Con with them, <laughs> you know, to get to know them. And, <laughs> Uh, just good dudes and uh, the fans of the books. And like you, when you look at the art, it's very clear that the artist read the books. Like, yeah. like, and, and he's just nailing the characters. Nice. And every now and then somebody's like, I thought his hair would be darker. It's like, well, this is clearly an artistic interpretation, you know. But, <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, so the minis are great. And I, but uh, the, the game is a skirmish game. So it's so far, we got four factions basically from the books. And so you're working with a limited number of minis. It's about, you know, five guys per side, give or take. And each one has special abilities, and it's kind of like a tactical little strategy game. Um, so there's Monster Hunter International, uh, the MCB, the, the government, the Monster Control Bureau. There's the the Lord Machado's bad guys from the first book. And then uh, uh, the, the basically the vampire squad, we call them the Night Stalkers, is like our is like our evil vampire group. Oh, hey, look, Laurel Hamilton commented on my. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool when you get one of the most famous authors in the world is just commenting on your Instagram. <laughs> exactly, and your ripped at your ripped abbed werewolf with nice belt too. Nice oh belt. yeah, man, he sh- he sh- he is ripped. Like like Earl is ripped. Let's be honest. <clears throat> um, yeah, as is- Walt as Walt flashes these image, can you give the audience a little breakdown of like? Okay, so who is this character that we're going to get to play? Play, and then also if you can show the mini to Walt, if it's possible, I, it's asking a lot on the fly. But okay, like right now, who I, I think Earl he is also the werewolf too, right? Yeah. So Earl, Earl. So spoiler alert for those of you who haven't read the first book, but it's been out. It's been out twelve years. That's on you now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Earl Bruce Harbinger, Willis was really dead. I want to go in and qualify that one too. What? It's been years. Yeah. <laughs> No, so Earl Harbinger is uh, is one of the leaders of Monster Hunter International. He's a werewolf secretly, uh, and he's not just a werewolf, but he's like the ultimate badass of werewolves. He's the king of werewolves, uh, who kind of like keeps everybody else in line, and anybody who gets out of line, you know. Uh, Earl Earl's a badass. He's an old Southern guy. He was actually born in 1900. Uh, so when I say old Southern guy, I mean old Southern guy. Uh, just great character. Yeah, he does actually rock Tom, Tommy guns because he became very fond of them during World War II. Sure. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and actually stole stole crates of them after the war <laughs> <laughs> off, of, off of a supply ship in 1946. I would have uh, done the same thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's and He's been – because, you know, back when they did the war, they were just throwing guns in the ocean. And they're mm-hmm. like – they just basically just backed a boat up to the ship and like, we threw them in the ocean. And I sorry, I look. I literally have that in the series. You know, as a gun guy, you would do whatever you could. Um, no, so Earl's a uh, great character, and there's actually like Monster Hunter Alpha is the third book in the series, and it's straight up an Earl book. In fact, I had people was like, "Well, why's he got a why's he got a Beretta stuck in his waistband?" Because in the book, he's he's a revolver guy. He's a he's a he's a Smith and Wesson revolver dude going back decades. But they forget in Monster Hunter Alpha. He actually winds up lifting one off somebody and sticking it in his waistband, and so the artist actually ran with that it was pretty pretty badass and that's mm-hmm. kurt miller right no actually it's a guy uh for this it's a guy named shane braithwaite okay and uh yeah he's been killing it this is the first time i've ever done anything any, anything with shane um right but he's just been killing it like, yeah it's like, nice it's nice when the artist actually like i think when you first get into writing you always think you know you, you haven't met any artists yet and you think oh they'll read my book and figure it out and it's like no they will not no they won't. <laughs> some they will, will like, yeah. well, so Jason mentioned Kurt Miller. Kurt Miller is a badass, and Kurt Miller's done a bunch of my covers. 
Yeah. And Kurt does great work. And then the guy who does most of the regular Monster Hunter covers is Oliver Wyman. Okay. Uh, and I love Ollie Wyman. He is a good artist. Okay. Ollie's from New Jersey, though. He's not. Uh, I was. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Oliver Wyman is the uh, the narrator of the audiobook. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Sorry, yeah. but no. But so so cover artist is Alan Pollock. Uh, sorry, there's too many people. Uh, but Alan's from New Jersey. Alan's not a gun guy. And okay. so a lot of times you'll see like the guns on the Monster Hunter covers will be something only gun dudes will be like, that's not quite right. Yes. <laughs> you know, why does that revolver have a magazine? I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> why, they, even why? Do it, they even do it to us in the far future with guns that don't exist. And we're like, <laughs> oh, oh, so you know how the carry on the N4 is. Okay. You know, but we, uh, we, we, we try to do fan service and get it right. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard well, like I said, well, as you said in the pre, as we were in the green room, we were talking, you're like the monster hunter galaxy's edge overlap is like uh, the Venn diagram is like a pancake. Yeah. And, and so it, you're gonna, you're gonna get both groups are emotional about weapons. Yeah. It's just a stack of pancakes. Yeah. I mean, there might be some outside where the, the syrup collects, but for the most part, <laughs> I think yeah. we got a lot of fans in common. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, uh, who do we have? Who do, who's this? This is a demon on someone's nice Mercedes. Oh yeah. So if you remember, okay. So in the very first book, we had this badass action sequence involving a car chase with gargoyles. Oh, wow. uh, and so Chris, the guy, everything epic really wanted to do a gargoyle. And so one of the larger minis is the gargoyle, uh, came out super badass. Actually. Uh, yeah. excited to paint this one. Uh, Here. plus r stuff made of rock is really always fun to paint. Right. <laughs> you know, to, to get that texture, but, but no. So the just a how badass. Do you, how, like, bad are you guy. saying like move it to like almost like a like that sort of like min, mineral essence inside the the rock? Or like yeah, when I try to paint a rock thing, it's like there's a couple techniques you can use to really cheat to rock. Painting rock creatures really lends itself to dry brushing, and uh, okay. actually, so it's actually one of the easier things to paint and make look super badass. Like you know what you're doing for a minimal right. amount of labor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is which is always the the tortilla size, uh, the tortilla bag of chips from Costco, is always the the sort of like how can I get max bang for my buck? In the Forgotten Ruin universe, we basically flip through the monster manual and then make the Rangers fight whatever we we find. Like obviously because there's a supernatural paranormal monster influence here. We're we're like and and you were a huge gamer even before you started writing. Before you probably even made it to uh college so like which kind of game system informs these monsters oh man okay so like initially I... just looking at it it feels like almost like not like masquerade but stuff like that like the vampires the werewolves the gargoyles i i kind of cherry pick wildly from the monster hunter universe so basically like i have a, a couple resources um most of the monster hunter stuff will tend to go folklore if possible so if it's a folklore based creature I'll usually pick some country's variant of it and then punch that up. Um, but I do st straight up lift from years and years of gaming. Uh, like, mo yeah, there's a, that that gargoyle came out so badass. Like these are these look so good. Uh, but like straight up, I'll do whites. And so on whites, what I did is like honestly, that's like straight up a D and D uh, super zombie on crack is what I ran right. with. Mm -hmm. D and D school. Uh, my, my, like my vampires though, I really punched up the power level on vampires and I went almost kind of like more, uh, old school Dracula esque level, major bad dudes, uh, uh level vampires. Very and, cool. Like, yeah. Like really punched that up. Like, like Susan there, Susan is, uh, Susan is top tier <laughs> vampire <laughs> badass attitude. Like so freaking badass. And so it was like, like, like she's a boss fight. Yeah. Um, no, so I grew up, I started out on D&D, &D, I think like most guys. I was, uh, you know, original Red Box. And then yep. when I was high school, was uh, second edition. You know, I could do Thacko. I think one reason I became an yes. accountant was, uh, I, was uh, I was I was usually the GM. <laughs> uh, and, and so, like with Thacko and Armor Class, you know, going positive and negative, we like, everybody would roll and then they'd look at me to see if it hit or not. And I'd right. be like, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's why I was good. At, well, I was a decent accountant. I owe it to second edition D and D. Yeah. Uh, got older, found Savage Worlds. Oh man, I'm a such a I'm a Savage Worlds dork. Love Savage Worlds. Um, let's see what else. Oh, that's, oh, that's what you love. Savage Worlds. Wall is that that's your wheelhouse. Yeah, I love Savage Worlds. I've been playing Delta Green lately. Um, and then oh, then speaking of speaking, guys are speaking of Modifius. I did uh, the Infinity role playing game, and we just had a campaign. We've been playing with Dune. We've been doing the Dune oh, role playing yeah. game. Oh wow! 
Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I'm a dork. I've played like everything. I, I, I'm awesome. a nerd. <laughs> I, I, as we pass as we pass through the miniatures, there was a Frankenstein, and so like when we when we work on the Forgotten Ruins series, like we we say, okay, we've got some Rangers. They've got you know a 240. They've got a grenade launcher. They've got a anti tank round. They're now going to fight a dragon, and then basically we just game that out. I'm a big fan of like the Frankenstein concept, and I think like when people go, oh, he's stupid or these kinds of things, it's like, did you read the book? Because oh. it's, it's a much different Frankenstein. How did you run that character in your books? All right. So for Frankenstein for me was um, I, I basically for the first couple books, I snuck him in there and people didn't know who he was. And so basically I had a federal agent who worked for the Monster Control Bureau oh, wow. uh, who was by the name of Agent Franks. <laughs> and I, so I, I literally, it like wore it on his sleeve. Right. And this guy was just this unstoppable killing machine, right? And he was like the baddest dude in the book. And you didn't really know why he was such a bad dude until we got later in the series. And there's actually how I reveal it. Once again, spoiler alert, this has been like nine years now. Um, there's a scene earlier where this guy gets killed. And uh, he's like this truck driver, got big arms. And he had tattoos of love and hate across his knuckles. Later on in the book, Agent Franks gets blown up and, like, his arms get shredded. When we see Agent Franks again, he's perfectly fine and wearing gloves. And then later when one of the gloves comes off, it's got hate on it. <laughs> and uh, everybody's like, oh, oh. And so what it is, so Agent Franks is just like, the, I mean, and then later on, and actually five books into the series, I did a book called Monster Hunter Nemesis, which is just a straight-up Agent Franks book. Yeah. Actually, one of my most popular novels. And so I go deep deep dive into uh, Frank's, which is funny because I, I include his take on the novel, Frankenstein, which it like kind of offends him because he's not emo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nor should he be. His last speech is one of the most almost and Randy and badass speeches about yeah, gonna, personal I mean, responsibility and accountability and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I yeah, like it. Was, it was a classic. And uh, so I had a lot of fun with that, my version, but no, I'm a very popular character. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Agent Frank's there. Uh, the mini is like, like, uh, we're still on the 3D prints, we're still messing with like the sizing to get them exactly right before we do the final versions. Um, but like the Frank's is he's hulking, he's like, he'd be, he'd be like six foot eight, 360 pounds kind of dude, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, just a if you're gonna use if you're gonna build your body out of spare parts, yeah, you might as well use. Head. Yeah, really yeah. big, strong ones. Yeah, and you can <laughs> and you can shop because everywhere there's a graveyard, there's a supermarket. Right? Yeah, <laughs> we have a, um, lot of, a lot of fun with that guy. So now, like, um, how does the system work? Uh, as in, like, what, uh, what uh, are we using? D twenties? We using D sixes? D sixes? Uh, uh, combat? Uh, yeah. Special D sixes. So, so skirmish style, special D sixes, and every, and Mary's working off a card. So every character's got a card with all their special rules on it, like so, like like basic powers. Uh, and they just added to the Kickstarter. Um, if you read the series, we have like where various dead characters come back and help. Uh, mm -hmm. So we just added like a ghost effect, so you can add various dead supporting characters to for boosts. Um, yeah, so it's pretty, basically kind of like a tactical movement kind of thing. But yeah, so it's a it's a D six system, and it's gonna be multiple D sixes depending on who it is and what they're doing. Yeah. So, and I've and actually guessing, not played the final version yet. I'm just going off of like what has been, you know, developed and I've been told about so far. So I actually have a lot. I don't know. <laughs> who, <laughs> a lot who of the ran the Kickstarter? Because we're like looking at the videos right now and the videos are so sharp. Yeah. Everything like, epic. Uh, so the guy's name is uh, Chris uh, Bartolis. Oh, wow. yeah. And uh, yeah, he's just a pro. He's been doing this. This is actually his 22nd Kickstarter. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, I mean, the dude has, and he's actually, honestly, uh, he's just been a pleasure to work with. He's just been a great guy. Just, Very you cool. Know, every so, yeah. And then, like, all the extra merchandise stuff we we added, like the T-shirts and the patches, and uh, that's all coming from Jack Wilder, who you guys probably know. Uh, he's a regular uh, in mm -hmm. our circles. And uh, so Jack is my, my regular merchandising guy and just all-around stud, great dude. And so Jack, we, we just kind of drafted him to come in and add some cool stuff. So very cool. And uh, what, what, uh, what are the next unlocks that are going to come? Have you guys revealed them all? Or is there more to come? There's more to come, but the one that we've revealed as of right now that we're working to, that we should hit like the next day or so is Mr. Trash bags, who is a very popular character. Um, 
<clears throat> Mr. Trashbags is a Shoggoth. Mm-hmm. And uh, so basically he's um, everybody's favorite blob monster. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a great character, and he's actually one of the funnest characters I've ever written. And, uh, and and over the series, he's gone up and down in size based upon how much he gets blown up. And uh, so we've had all the way up to where he's like a giant bulldozer size, you know, monstrosity of just unstoppable destruction. To where he at one point got blown up to the point where all that was left was about the size of a hamster. And <laughs> and so we had this little in the, in the audiobooks like a high pitched Mr. Trashbags attacks. But just imagine like hamster sized blob, you know? Yeah. And so I think the mini will be like towards the larger size. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why not? It's just yeah. printing resin. That's all it is. Yeah. So and- we're, yeah, he, he's, a, he's actually a great character. So we, but we've unlocked um, uh, probably five or six stretch goals so far. And yeah. we're really excited for that last stretch because, you know, Kickstarter is that last couple days is mm-hmm. when it just kind of picks up again. And so we got a bunch of stuff ready. We'll see how far we get. And and also the um, you you pretty much dominate at Dragon and Liberty Con. So yeah, like those when, are my favorites. When you have this many sales in a Kickstarter, you know that there are going to be the and and because this game is a game that people can sit down and throw out, and it's not big time. You you know you're going to see like a lot of those games at that convention, yeah. as opposed to like hey you know what's this rando game? So it's like if you like if you like going to conventions to play the game, probably a safe investment because you're going to be able to you're going to be able to find a lot of games which yeah, i'm actually like really excited for that because like I, I i do a lot of cons um and like i said i play infinity as my primary game but infinity is a very terrain heavy thing yeah so i don't ever travel with it because mm-hmm. you need I, I pretty much have like a like i'll set up a map and it's like a box about right. you know yay big of ter- uh, you know plywood little like little balsa wood buildings i've painted that I set up in, a, in like a four four foot by four foot rubber mat. <laughs> yeah. What if you got like a mini camping trailer and then outfitted it for that, and then you could oh, just man. tow it? That would be the way to go. <laughs> that would be baller. Actually, what I do is get one of those great big RVs and just do like mega book tour around America. Right. Yeah. yeah. Every, there you go. Every day, sign it in a different city, and then just set up the tent and just mini game all night with all the other you know, birds. It's it, it's weird. <laughs> Jason and I have talked about like doing that. Like and and so like. Maybe we should do like our own version of the uh, the traveling Wilburys, <laughs> you know, and just like just get some, like three or four authors together, and we'll have a little bluebird convoy or one thing, and then we'll just do that. We'll become the Grateful Dead, and it'll get supremely weird. <laughs> we we would have to do where we would either like go to a bookstore and sign, or then go yeah. to a shooting range, yeah, and right, sign, and then just like yeah. bounce a game store, and then just bounce her, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, what? We, we never we get, get like, another book written. No, no, but you know, we've written enough. We just want to spend the money now. Yeah, but the book um, about the tour would be great. Yeah, yeah. That we'll, we'll do a documentary about the tour. And uh no, um, we we just on our Kickstarter, we put in a goofy goal, and our goal was uh, you know, for five thousand dollars, uh, you can have dinner with us in Vegas and go to Battlefield Vegas, which is the gun range there. And uh we didn't think anyone would buy it, and one guy did. That's... And now, now we actually have to do it. <laughs> so we're we're kind of hoping you'll show up for dinner, and if you want to go to the gun range with us, we will buy all the ammo. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Because it's gonna <laughs> be it's gonna be during twenty books if you're there. Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Okay. Yeah. In if... fact, that reminds me, I gotta get, I gotta get to, I gotta get send a, I gotta send an email to Craig about. Yeah. teaching stuff yeah no yeah, i love exactly. 20 books 20 books yeah exactly so we'll let you know our deets but if you want to go to the the the, oh, the range yeah. and then we're also if gonna i can i love battlefield vegas is a hoot yeah yeah exactly that would mm-hmm. that would be fun walt's gonna be there jason's gonna be there yep. i'm gonna be there this guy who actually held our feet to the fire and and him and his wife are unreasonably excited about it and that makes us feel even more stressed <laughs> out like do we have to be on now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna be like uh, running this game, and I'm gonna be like, "Please don't suck. Please don't suck." Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I have a couple of questions from the uh, from the chat. So yeah, um, yeah. The chat's uh, been active. Like, yeah. Oh, I haven't even looked. So um, Leo Vicaro is asking, uh, "Do the cards oh, wow. have character buffs on it?" Uh, yes. So each individual character will have uh, some some like you, three or four th- special things that are unique to their characters. Also, their weaponry. Uh, is going to be based on the stuff that they commonly use in the books. Uh, like, for example, so we have Holly. Uh, Holly Newcastle's coming out. 
fan favorite. She's always got an RPG. She loves RPGs, right? That's like her <laughs> like her thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Milo's got a flamethrower, so we had to do area of effect uh, attacks. Uh, but mm -hmm. you no, know, so everybody's got different particular things. Like Julie is like super super accurate marksman. Uh, you know, so on. Earl is like damn near indestructible. So on and so forth. So yeah. So yeah. Uh, the fun oh, fun right. pro tip of this conversation is that somebody involved in this conversation has actually worked with a flamethrower in a real world military situation. Is that Walter right, or Walt? Jason? <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. <laughs> Dude, I have. I That's... once lit uh, a gallon of gas on fire in the woods. <laughs> That's flamethrower like. Yeah, it's um, very similar. Gus Bryant is saying, uh, is this system similar to anything currently on the market? Uh, for example, uh, Frostgrave, etc. Or is it completely unique? I believe completely unique as far as I know. Uh, I'm not sure like what Chris's starting thing was for like, where he started building it at. Uh, and so I'm not sure if it's got some influences. If it does, it's not something that I've played. But there's enough stuff out there that who knows? I, I actually don't know the answer to that one. Yeah, it's a, you got to have an exhaustive knowledge to definitively say oh, this dude, has never are, been done before, right? Like There are so many. like Because there's a bunch of systems that are D6 systems. Um, mm -hmm. And of that, I, I, I don't even know. Like, like who? Yeah, beats me. I've played a lot of games. Uh, but like I've played like a fraction of a percent of what's out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is unlike the Solomon, 80s right? game store when like there were a lot of 80 games in the 80s game store, but generally there was there was a few that everybody was playing. And then like I took a break from games, then I looked at the games market. I'm like, it seems like everybody's spitting out a game every week, you know, and there's a there it's an actual job now, whereas I think it used to be like like you know, like Gary Gygax sold insurance by the day and then designed D D at night, you know. So yeah, it's crazy. Next yeah, that's question. Why, that's why us number crunching munchkin background guys wind up doing this for fun. <laughs> oh, was that, the Malino was that the Malinois? Yes, he's decided <laughs> that something outside his domain has irritated him. And uh, he takes a 40 mile an hour leap from uh, the bedroom to the uh, place where he can see the best and basically annoys everybody. Yeah, see, I love dogs, and my dog is like half of that dog. So, I mean, a Malinois is like just an engine of destruction. What's the uh, What's the other side? Oh, no, so my, no, no, my dog's, uh, my, I have a, my dog, no, I said half the size. No, 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 like yeah. what, what? It's oh, is is it is it a half mal, half something else? No, no, no. I got my. I have a I have a Krasnovian waffle hound. So oh, right on. Yeah, yep. half half poodle and half Australian shepherd. Exactly, yep. so, and and long live, <laughs> long live Krasnovia. Yeah, that's I am awesome. official. I'm a, I am an official ambassador of the Krasnovian people now, so I have to yeah. I have to represent. I am the it golden the coffee. Con, I am the golden coffee con of Vanistan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a bunch of people on uh, both Facebook and and elsewhere who are demanding that this uh, book tour between the three of you yes become a reality. Uh, we we could we we should plan it all year long and then execute early late spring early summer next year. But actually, there's a you know I was going to tell you, Larry. There we just got in touch with this. Uh, <coughs> guy and he runs a series of gun superstores in california i know that seems like an oxymoron he's a huge second amendment uh, uh marine and everything like that and they're called guns unknown and basically it's you can build your own guns he's selling everybody the gun parts to build their own guns that the state won't let us so we're talking to him right now he's like i want to get your books in there i'm like yeah you also want to get larry's books in there yeah, he, mass, he's, massive yeah. props to anybody who's been fighting the good fight. Uh, oh, yeah, know, this guy, this guy's in not California. He's, yeah, Holy yeah. Crap. Well, I mean, but our sheriffs are like, you know, like they're they're saying, nope, we're giving away, uh, you know, concealed carry. You can have all that, yep. you know, and so it's 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 uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, if we were to do that, we'd tour this guy's guns. We would tour gun stores. We would tour gun ranges, bookstores and uh, pizza places. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this, I think this could really video have game legs. Arcades. Yeah. This is, we, this, we, we could do, this we could do a Kickstarter and, and maybe yeah. start off with just like the, uh, the old eighties van with like a wizard airbrushed on the side. And then the stretch yeah. goal gets us closer and closer to yeah. a super cruiser. And then we put, we put in our goofy goal, which we think no one will take, which is uh, $10,000 a day with Larry and Jason and Nick. And we know no one will do it. And then like, five people will be like yeah i want that we made fifty thousand bucks right there 
I am. I never underestimate people uh, yeah. on that because they there's always some dude who will shock you. Yeah. Because you know, <laughs> uh, he, he's a hardcore fan, and he um, you know, he bought Bitcoin when it was like fourteen dollars. <laughs> That's exactly right? what I was yeah. going to say. He's sitting on like eight hundred million Bitcoin to make all his fantasies come true. <laughs> I mean, I knew a guy. I knew a guy. I remember one time he bought a pizza with a Bitcoin. You know, going back that far, and so. <laughs> Obviously, there are dudes out there with like that yeah. kind of money. They could totally yeah. do this sort of thing. I <laughs> told all of our readers, if any of you has any Bitcoin and you give it to us, you will be the biggest star in Galaxy's Edge ever. <laughs> you you will you will murder Tyrus Rex. Let us know. You, you get a whole book just named after you. It's like right. the guy. You are the man. I don't know. Cause I've done some charity stuff and I've, I've always been like just completely blown away by like how yeah. charitable people are. But I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna like give you a bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> that would be badass, though. Oh man! So with uh, with the uh, the time kind of winding down on the Kickstarter, right? You guys are at two eighteen seven forty four. Uh, you got seven days to go. Yep. What are some of the things people can expect for the end of the Kickstarter? Um, well, we're just gonna keep. We'll just keep hitting stretch goals as we go. And like I said, I hope for the last couple of days, do the traditional Kickstarter thing uh, where, where it picks up again. We've got a bunch of stuff planned and, and we, and people are like, well, are you going to do this? Or are you going to do this character? Are you going to do this character? Uh, that don't know. Uh, I, we'll go as far as we can. One thing you got to watch out for, and you guys know about this too. Uh, a lot of Kickstarter, the Kickstarters that fail are the guys that over promise mm -hmm. uh, and under deliver because they get too excited and they yeah. keep, you know, giving out more, more stuff. And they don't do the proper accounting of can we do that? So ours are spaced out enough to you know be sure. Uh, I have a bunch of things that I would like to see if we can get that far. Uh, we'll see if that happens or not. Can and, you give uh, us one hint of one thing that you would like to see? Maybe that'll spur everybody on. To, and I and I want to say right now, like um, if you, if anybody's watching this, like you know, consider jumping in and supporting this just because. And I don't, I, I don't want to, I always say, I don't want to get political or anything like that, but there is a culture war going on. And like, you're about to see a train wreck on Amazon with Lord of the Rings. Enjoy that. It's going to be totally devastating. I, um, I think it's going to be awful. It like, it's, like I just, my vibe. Like yeah. my, mm -hmm. And I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge Lord of the, I mean, I love Lord of the Rings, but I'm not like a huge, like Cimmerillion, like ultra fan, you know? Yeah. But every person I know like that is just terrified. And yeah. everything that's been shown is just like not looking good. So yeah, uh, I just saw some people talk nerdotic or nerdrotic um, is at Comic Con right now, and he's saying they're completely retconning the new Minorians, and yeah. you know, just going. You're like, okay, they're, sh you know, they're so. short now. <laughs> exactly. So so like, if you like, I I think, uh, and just a real quick divergent here. I think that we're all very close to beginning to see the kind of content that we want mainstream in, oh, yeah. in in the it, you know but the way that you get there is the big guys look at the numbers that we do in these kind of things and they smell the money and they give us our shot to do these things so yeah you know if you just want to go in at the lowest level please go in for that if, you, if you're doing well this month or whatever and you don't even do these things or whatever uh support it out of spite support it oh. out of spite Spite support's totally valid. Well, like, I, uh, one thing I need to go support, like, I don't know if you guys see, like, Eric July is doing... Uh, oh, yeah, his comic. Uh, yeah, he's doing his comic, and he's at, like, th three million bucks now. Mm -hmm. And it's astounding. And so the thing is, I mean, that kind of thing is is amazing. And it's huge. I honestly feel, guys, like, uh, I've been doing this a long time, and I've kind of been, like, out there on the, the, the tip of the spear in the culture war. You know, and it kind of sucks, and it's been dumb and lame. And the longest time, there are a few years, I felt really alone, right? I, yeah. was, I was really lonely out there. It's not lonely anymore. There's no. a lot of dudes who are, who, are, who are waving our flags high. And also, I honestly feel like there's a pendulum swing. Like, I feel like the pendulum is swinging. Yep. And I see these little things all over. And, and not just in entertainment, not just in our world, in publishing and movies and comic books and games – but I feel like the whole world, I think we're heading for a pendulum swing where uh, guys like us, we've kind of been on the forefront of this for a while, but I think the world is catching up and I think people have seen enough and they caught on and they're sick of this. And like, so we talked about Chris Pratt earlier, you know, like that dude's out there doing his thing, but like terminal list, terminal list mm -hmm. is cleaning up. 
They describe it yep. as a right wing revenge fantasy, and the ratings skyrocket. Yeah. Right, exactly. You know? uh, Reacher. It's Reacher regressive was... and misogynistic, and, yeah. and and you know, if you like guys with giant guns doing jujitsu and solving their problems with violence, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Why? Well, like, why not? What's well, not like, to like? Stop selling me. <laughs> yeah, like Reacher. Reacher wasn't even political at all, but yeah. the fact that it was like it was it it wasn't political made it political. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it was it was like a throwback to like a 1980s style big tough dude handles mm-hmm. his business by shooting bad guys in the face. Exactly. And it was so awesome. That's, that's my appeal to everybody. Like. I know that you're feeling like in this moment, you want to do something to fight the culture. And if you don't want to go down and like storm the Capitol or drive trucks around it and haunt it, everybody, (laughs) or, you know, just, you know, generally be a nuisance, a great way is to actually give your money to stuff like this. And then you get something back and maybe, like I said, maybe you're not in it. You can give it as a gift this Christmas, or maybe you can just have the satisfaction that you stuck your finger into the eye of a group of people who uh, think that Lori Korea, Lori Korea, Lori Korea <laughs> is the international lord of hate, and that he is the worst person in the entire world, and she, you know, can't she has no business having this level of success? Just, just prove them to do that. So, jumping in, one last thing, and I want to go to Walt, just talking a little bit about an Iraq experience, and then maybe we can kind of wrap this up. But uh, uh, what what would be like one thing that you would want to see there towards the end that, that that maybe we can push people to like go for it because you might see this. OK, so the stuff that we've made on the list that I really want orcs, we've talked about uh, Skippy, Edward, uh, Gretchen, uh, the 1980s crew uh, involving <laughs> Chip. Yeah. And so those are and then also some more special task force unicorn. Yeah, uh, specifically Heather, and so we've had some discussions on that. Yeah, and so uh, the, the fans have like made their voices heard on what they'd yeah. like to see as stretch goals, and now it's like I'm just let's see how far we can get because I would love I would love to get to all those. That would be amazing. Nice. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, tell us what happened to you in Iraq, man. Oh, I, I thought I was dodging this bullet. No. Uh, so <laughs> you're so the star. I, so I'm in I'm in Iraq and and uh, one of the guys that we were there with uh, was was a really big into like going to the range and stuff like that and he wasn't a nut but he he really liked the like the antique style stuff right so you got your Mosin Nagant I'm probably saying that wrong you know you got your your M1 Garand you know he liked his he liked the the modern stuff okay but he was really into that like wood stocks and the varnish and the 1911s and and he comes up and he's like dude you like porn right I, I mean gun porn and I'm like first of all whoa <laughs> you gotta there are two things here competing you, you you need to slow down and he was like he's like yeah so um I got this book you gotta read it and I'm like I'm like this isn't like some like urban fantasy he goes it's not that urban fantasy you know that urban fantasy it's it you'll like this and i'm like oh great somebody who knows what i like so he hands me the book and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna be like all right so there are a couple of times in in your life when you're a reader where you get a book and that author trigger punches those first lines right uh for for one like galaxy's edge the galaxy is a dumpster fire Oh my God, you know, forgotten ruin. Like, like I knew I could speak Elvish when I started dreaming in it. And you're like, wait, what, how is, why is my ranger speaking Elvish? You know, you get those, (laughs) those times where you're just, we are just like, yes, that is a great opening line. Right. So, you know, I knew I was going to have a bad day when I had to throw my boss. Oh no. I knew I was going to have a a good day when I knew, when I threw my boss out the window, I'm like, (laughs) you had me yeah. a good day. Bro. Yeah, that's that's you, you know. just reached every person in America. Bam. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was just like, all right, so maybe this doesn't suck. So, you know, you fast forward a couple of days, you've been doing some patrols, you've been doing this, you've been doing that, you know. Um, and you get five minutes to where just like your your dude, your your guys aren't messing with you. And it's like, it's like, hey, what are you reading? And I'm just like putting my hand up, like, nope, nope just leave me alone. I'm not done, <laughs> you know, and we were hooked and, and this book got passed around the platoon and was just like, it was, it was like crazy pants. Everybody wanted to be in them, you yeah. know? And, and it was like, even the people who weren't like big time gun people. And it's like, you know, 
I don't like the way he portrayed the trailer park elves. And it's like, well, you grew up in a trailer park. You don't like anything portrayed in a trailer park, you know? And, and it was it was really funny to see this book go around and have as much support as it did because at the time, um, uh, I was with a military police unit. And it's not like in the infantry where it's like, oh, we're going to fight it or, you know? And it's like, it, you know, these are, these are very diverse people who come from a, a myriad of backgrounds. So, like, to see this book come around and like the biggest like like one of the one of the lady mps came up and was like here's your book back i'm like how, how wait how did you get this and they're like they're like you know i totally would have been julie shackelford and she like <laughs> you know moved her way off the screen <laughs> like what so it was kind of funny to see this to, to, to make the rounds and it was it was a lot of fun to actually uh you know yeah. uh get back and at the time we used to have uh we used to have a, a borders bookstore uh, in my city and we got back from deployment and, uh, um, I was happy to see there was like more than one on the shelf. I think, I think this one and like two more had come out at the time. Right. Cause that was 2007, 2008, somewhere around there. I believe it just came out in 2008. Yeah. It would have been 2009. So yeah. Yeah. So, um, we had just come back. We had, we, had, you know, we had, we had a borders bookstore and it had this great cafe and I could sit down and read about monsters getting plugged. And, you know, it was, it was, it was really fun experience. So it was, it was really cool to have that happen and have that, uh, you know, get to take a picture with your book on top. <laughs> on top. So, I, yeah, love, okay. I love getting pictures from all over the world. I have, I've gotten so many pictures from like really badass locations and, Dudes doing cool stuff, posing with whatever their job is. Uh, mm -hmm. I got some great pictures where guys were rocking Monster Hunter patches uh, on, their, on their kit. You know, doing stuff like hanging off the skids of a little bird with their Monster Hunter patch. Man in a <laughs> door gun. Uh, doing cool guy door kicking stuff and mm -hmm. rocking their Monster Hunter patch. I love that. I, I, absolutely, I, I wrote these books for, like, my person. Yeah. Oh, we got a freeze. Hold on. There we go. You know, mm -hmm. but all the, all the, yeah. oh yeah. I was gonna say, I wrote these for my personal entertainment and all the dudes like me glommed onto it. And it just, we just ran from there. And then it was weird. And all of a sudden people were like, I realized I was actually an okay author when people who weren't like my people were like, you know, I'm a 68 year old grandma and I don't like violence and monster movies, but I love this book. And I'm like, whoa, yeah, I might actually yeah. have a career. <laughs> <laughs> And what you find so often is it's the strength of the characters that they dig. Like they like something about those people. And you can tell I, every conversation I've had with you or, or watched you, or even when you are Lord of deathing online, you know, in, in toe to toe Twitter combat and everything like that. The funny thing is people are fighting for their lives against you and you are having fun, which is like the, it's like the ultimate knife fighter. That guy's having the most fun in the world and you're bleeding out and that's entertaining to us. You know, the like, one so. that gets me, the one that always gets me is hilarious is like when I'm, when I'm like tearing people up on the internet and I, and I do like, yeah. I like doing, I, I, to me, it like owns the brain. Yeah. Um, I'll be fighting with people on the internet and they're like, you're angry. And I was like, dude, I am like the opposite of angry. I love this crap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I'm having fun. You on the other hand are bleeding out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the mental, the mental thing. Oh, so I was going to tell you guys real fast why I haven't been painting minis lately. Yes. Um, okay, so I've, I've taken on the stupidest deadline of my life. Uh, it's the first time ever I'm writing a nonfiction book. Um, mm -hmm. I got approached by a major publisher of nonfiction. Uh, and it was right... Um, uh, basically, I've been doing it a month now. I've been putting about 12 to 16 hour days doing a nonfiction book about uh, guns and the, uh, the battle over the Second Amendment in America. Ooh. So, yeah, so I'm doing just a great, so it's a, they came to me cause I was the guy with all the blog posts on the topic yeah. Yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. the persuasive one. So it's kind of a persuasive book slash give ammo to our side kind of thing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I've been working on that and I'm almost done and Holy crap. I got four days left before my <laughs> yeah. insane deadline is up. Yeah. You will regularly, like you, you've been writing some articles for some high powered publications, but when it gets into these Twitter wars, you will download because the, you have the knowledge of being a gun guy, a gun salesman, a gun contractor, and then also an accountant who understands that you may have feelings, but the balance sheet says different. Yeah, and, and I love—I'm a stats dork, and right. so yeah, 
but I was like, I, the goal on this wasn't to make it academic. Like, I'm not going to go be like one of those guys like arguing history, and it's not going to be. I'm not a statistician, so I'm not going to go into the stats. I mean, everything everything I say is cited. Like, I cite mm-hmm. everything I say. But no, mostly it's just me throwing down on every stupid thing that I've ever heard on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> about, exactly. about guns. Which and is so which is a many. lot of stupid things. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I had really. To cut off. At some I, point, otherwise it'd be this thick, you know. Yes, I really. You were, you were having to, okay. You, you were having fun this week uh, with you know that kid who turned into a legend, uh, making a shot at forty yards, and then the gun people say, "Oh, gun free zone" and everything like that. But you went out straight out the next morning and tried to reproduce and yeah. and gave mad props where it was at. Oh, mad props! That was some uh, from the description we're going off of right now. Uh, forty yards, fifteen second par time, eight out of ten. I did an 18 inch uh, uh, silhouette target is what I use because like, I was what my steel is shaped like and uh, uh, I ran 10 for 10 in seven and a half seconds but that was like no one was shooting back at me right you yeah. know? I'm, I'm sitting on a nice peaceful morning <laughs> it's, it's like seven in the morning it's 65 degrees and sunny the birds are singing uh, yeah so to be fair that kid is a stone cold badass yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I shoot a lot, and I, I I have a I have my own range. I have a, a, a stupid ammo budget. I enjoy this stuff, and that kid, man, that kid delivered. Holy yeah. crap! That was some good shooting. Yeah, yeah. and it was the same week. Uh, I think a hundred years prior that uh, Wild Bill Hickok hit a guy who retreated and then fired at him at seventy five year- yards with a shot stabilized by with his Navy Colt revolver on his forearm, which seventy five yards. With one of those wonky bastards, yep. it was pretty incredible. <laughs> there was a, about ten years ago. There was an Air Force uh, security police. Um, he was on a bicycle. He was on a bike patrol. What? And he, yes, and he uh, responded on a base. I'm trying to remember where it was in the U.S. And they had a uh, a guy go on a rampage. Uh, he was armed with a rifle. This dude, the security police, biked out there jumped off the bike, engaged him with his M9, and once it was like 76 yards, wow. uh, brained him. Got him oh, in the wow. head. Dropped the dude. I'm trying to remember what that, what, where that, that it was about 10 or 12 years ago this happened. Yeah. Um, and, he probably uh, rattled that pistol because those things were, you know, hinky. Yeah. Well, the end of their life, probably, well, probably yeah, those, rattled it in victory. I, I love Brettas. I love Brettas, but man, those military Brettas are beat to crap. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that, but yeah, it's like it was like seventy six yards. Just got the guy yeah. in the head. So, and you're always, uh, you're always like, you know, when you're not painting minis, and we're gonna let you go because we know you got to write this thing. Um, uh, what is your, <laughs> what is what is your current gun fascination right now? Because you you you're working a few different things. Oh, what am I currently working? Oh, okay, so I'm I'm a I'm a coin chaser. So I, I I like try to like you know get the different achievements. Like I'm playing Xbox. Um, I have this here because I was dry firing right before I talked to you guys. And uh, so I'm just running a Sig Spectre Comp Trujicon SRO as nice. my current current yeah. rig that I'm playing with. Before that, it was Beretta LTT, and uh, so yeah, but that's what yeah. I'm rocking right now. Oh, I just I, mean, I just re- I just recently went to the range, and I have done a new thing, which I've been wrapping my grip uh, in bat bat grip tape, and I cannot tell you what a difference that has made for me. I posted probably what was my best. Then you posted yours and you're like, I've been dry firing a lot this year and your group were like, <laughs> so tight. Mine were at least on it. I was like, okay, I got to get good. And you're uh, also rocking <laughs> this. I, I've been, I've been practicing a lot. Um, okay. I have, I have uh, instructors come out to my house and host classes here and that kind of thing. In fact, one of them, uh, Rick Remington wanted to do a class cause he lives out by Jason. And yeah. I think I put Jason, Jason, if you get a chance to shoot with Rick, do mm-hmm. it. The guy is phenomenal. Yeah, I need to link back up with him because I think his last class was right when I had uh, some family obligations. Yeah, but it's on the radar. Total stud. If you get a chance to do it, do it. But now, just gonna say, this is my desk gun. So oh, nice. <laughs> I need a desk gun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm here all day writing. You know, I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't. I don't whip this stuff out on most podcasts. Just so you guys know. No, this is this is this is for the special people. So make this Kickstarter huge for spite for the culture war and because you just love guns and you love stuff. And then please let us know if we should do our version of the warp tour, the warped author tour, and uh, we'll just do it in Cadillac style. We'll just go from resort to resort, having fun. I'm down. All right. Yeah. Walt, take us out. 
I love that. Uh, so yeah, the link has been uh, uh, scrolling across the bottom of the screen. So uh, if you go to uh, and drop a tiny Earl, uh, for those who are just listening, it's 5N86DKB as in Bravo and then three. Uh, you can go right there, help them um, help them get that Mr. Trashbags uh, Shaga uh, mini unlocked so that uh, uh, you can have that on your table and scare the living hell out of your players when you pull out a one foot tall mini. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for coming out larry i really appreciate thank it you, everybody in the chat has been great and they've been uh really throwing some love your way cool thanks guys thank i appreciate you. it thanks for having me on and, thank you uh, boss